Hello everybody, this is Steve, your everyday guy here, and today on today's video, what we are going to do is we're going to take the tachometer and the hour meter that I've purchased, and we're going to install it on my Hankai 18 horsepower. That way I can see how many RPMs I'm getting to see if I'm actually getting the, the correct amount of RPMs for an 18 horsepower, and I can also keep an eye on my hours, and that way I'm able to better service it at regular intervals. So without further ado, watch this intro, and we come back, we're going to get started on installing this. Let's begin by taking a look at the tools that I used for this project. Going from left to right in the picture, you'll see the drill bit. Um, just above that, you'll see the tachometer. Below that and to the right of the drill bit, you'll see the blue painter's tape. Then to the right of that, I've got a red marker. Right above there is the screws I chose, as well as the washers. You'll notice both the screws and the washers are stainless steel. You'll want to make sure that you're using stainless steel so they do not corrode. Then I've got the drill, as well as the tap and die set that I'm going to use to cut the holes. Now, in terms of the size of tap and die and the drill bit to use, you'll need to choose your screw before that. And then once you know the screw, you'll be able to then look up and see which drill and tap and set that you need to use to be able to properly thread those. If you do enjoy this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. That way, when I come out with my next video, you do get notified. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where exactly I want to put my um, device on my outboard. Now, for me, a lot of, what I see a lot of people doing is I see them just installing them inside because they're not all that concerned with actually reading the hours, so they'll just um, kind of tuck it away on the inside there and um, keep it under the cowl. For me, I actually want to be able to see my RPMs while I'm out there on the water, so I'm going to install mine slightly different. What I want to do is I'm going to actually take mine and I'm going to install it right here on my control arm or my tiller arm. And I'm thinking that's a good fit for it. And the reason is, is in the, if you look in this picture, you'll see the picture shows that there's plenty of clearance there and that when I drill in, I don't have to actually worry about drilling through the electrical components. Those electrical components are actually located right here at the back of this. So I'm going to put it right there and I think that's actually a really good spot for it. You'll notice it does hang over the sides a little bit, probably not the best, but it'll work for me. So the first thing I'm going to do now that I know where I want it to go, is I need to know where to drill my holes. So I'm going to take my painter's tape. Yeah, that part's a little weak, so make sure we get a nice, good, sticky part that'll stick. And then we're going to take that. And we're going to put it right there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to line this up how we want that to go on there. So I think right there is about perfectly lined up. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my Sharpie. Uh, mine happens to be red. You can use whatever you want. On blue tape, black would probably work better. We're going to take a red Sharpie. And then we're going to go down to the tape. And we're simply going to put the hole right there. Hole right there. Now we have it clearly marked right there. You can see where we want our pilot holes for the screws to go. So on the next step, we're going to take our drill bit, which is happens to be 7 ths and we're going to drill the holes right there. So here I've got my drill, my drill bit installed. I want to make sure it's turned in the correct direction. And we've got that on drill setting, which we do. So the next thing is, is I'm going to line it up with the holes I've marked. Now one of the most important things is, the reason I've got tape on here is for two reasons. One, it makes it really easy to mark where my holes are going to be. Two, it keeps my drill bit from sliding around as I get started on the slick metal. So we're going to start out kind of slow. And then once it gets good, then we're going to kind of put a little bit of effort behind it, not too much. And as it goes through, we don't want it to go down and drill into my controls because we want to make sure those are still fully operational. So we've got that first one drilled. Now let's go for that second one. So you can see it's just starting right there. And of course, I'm trying to keep the drill as straight as possible. All right, we've got both those drilled. The next step is to actually cut the screw holes into it. So the screws I had chosen for this were number six screws. Um, I took my hour meter in with me to make sure I got ones that had heads that were big enough and the, uh, make sure they weren't too fat to go through there. And that's why I chose number six. And so what you want to do when you're cutting the holes is you want to make sure you're using the proper thread cutter. 
which matches up with this. So number six by 32 said it to use the number 764 strobe bit. So that is what I used. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it on there. And now we are slowly gonna turn. Oh dear. That was something I had not anticipated on. So we're slowly gonna turn as we cut. What I'm doing here is I'm also tilting my arm up so I've got enough clearance for it to spin. All right, there we go. We can see you've got that drill through and clear. All right. Now for the next one. All right, there we go. We've got it all the way through. Just screw that out of there. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure all your holes are threaded correctly because the last thing you want to do is get to the end and then find out that you need to, after everything's complete, that you need to recut your holes. So I've got my screw and I've got my screwdriver here. So we're going to check out the back hole first. So we're simply going to screw that in there. As you can see, it's going in real easy. Uh, it doesn't pull out. So that is good. Now let's do that front hole. Front hole might get a little tricky because there's actually a plastic bit down there. But hey, that thread's in nice and good. So we should be able to tighten up against that. Once you get that screw out, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our actual tachometer. All right, we got that one started. One thing I made sure as I put this on, I make sure there's plenty of place for me to keep my safety key. So I can put that in there and it'll come out easy in the event that I get separated from the boat. Because the last thing I want is for that boat to run me over. That would be a very horrible way to end up nicely out on the water. All right, so get that put in there. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those up down very snug. Um, for those of you who are in salt water application, 100% you wanna put some Loctite on here to make sure you don't get any of that sea salt in there. All right. For me, I'm not in salt water, I'm in fresh water. Um, later on, I might take those out and redo them with Loctite. For now, I've got it there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out, so I'm going to show you right here on the bag. You can see right there it says stainless. So I've used stainless steel. That way, I don't have to worry about these rusting or worse corroding and causing more rust there. The one thing I'm not sure is I'm not sure what this control arm is. I'm assuming it's some form of stainless steel alloy. Um, Probably wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of paint on it as you do that. That way you seal it up nice and good. So we've got we've got this mounted. All right, now that we've got that all mounted onto there, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this wire and we're gonna undo this because we have to feed that in here. The way that the tachometer works is it reads the electric pulse as it goes into the spark plug, ensuring that it knows when it fires. So what that means is that you need to make sure you're not running this across any electrical wire. Because if you do so, you're going to get a misread and it's going to think that that's a spark plug firing. So what I've chosen to do is I've chosen to use one of these openings right here. So I'm just going to take one of these out. So I've taken that out and I don't think you can see it, but I've actually drilled a little hole through that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cord. We're going to go through here. We're going to go through here first. Actually, you know what? I think it would probably be easier to feed it through the other way. So we're going to go right through here. Well, let me widen that hole a little bigger. All right, so we've got that hole bigger. Make sure we're feeding it through the correct direction.
All right, there you see coming through. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to feed that right through there. I'm going to adjust the camera so we can see better. All right. So it's this hole right there is the one we're using. We're going to feed that through. Now I've got that back in place. All right. So the next thing I need to do is I need to make sure that I'm not going to get any interference. Make sure we got just the right amount of slack on there. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to zip tie it in place to keep it from getting caught on things. So we've got that there. Now on the next step is to make sure we're fishing it through the motor correctly so that we do not end up um, getting caught on any of the operational parts. This right here is where the throttle goes through. So we want to make sure we're not getting caught on any of that as it rotates. The other thing we want to make sure is that we are not interfering with the choke system. So let's go ahead and actually, you know what? I think I want to run it this way. Now right here is an electrical wire. So what I want to make sure is that I do not have it contacting that, even though that's just a ground wire right there. Got that. That's an excel. That's a throttle right there, so I don't need to worry about that interfering with anything. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this, and we are simply going to wrap it around this wire. And this is my spark plug wire. That's what I was talking about. How it simply senses if it's firing. minute here I'm gonna get a zip tie to go around there here you can see I've got two zip ties what I'm gonna do with the first one is I'm gonna use that to zip tie this into place now make sure it maintains a good connection and it looks like this zip tie may really be a lot of overkill for this get that wrapped back around there See why I need the zip tie because that had already come and done. All right, so now we're gonna get that zip tied in place, and we'll cut that once we've got everything the way that we want it. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take all this extra, and see I'm just putting that all together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zip tie this, and I'm gonna keep that nice and neat. All right. All right, so there's that zip tie. This right here is my throttle cable. So I'm going to take a third zip tie. We're going to zip tie that to the throttle cable. That way, that make sure that stays out of the way. And then my last zip tie. On the last zip tie, what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to zip tie, attempt to zip tie this in a way that keeps it um, everything fully operational, but the cord out of the way. So we're going to attempt to zip tie right through there. if we zip tie like that we've got plenty of room for rotation which we do and then as you can see I can still get through push that out of the way and get through there and not have to worry about snagging that all right so the next step we're going to do is we're going to cut these off and I'm going to put the cowl back on 
I'm going to fire it up. We're going to check and see how it does. Here you can see the RPMs fluctuating between 4400 and 4500, which I believe are the correct RPMs for an 18 horsepower two-stroke outboard motor. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I try to respond to all my questions within 24 hours. Thank you for taking time to